Hi, this is Ian Troy, and we're here in the cage, Cody Oxwheeler. And now, those of you guys that have watched the show, Cody was my third interview, and this here, is, as we're recording as of now, is my 35th interview. Man, so it's good to have you back. Man. Yeah, it's good to be back, man. You know, that's man, the 35th? Man, I was the third interview, so this is something special, man. You no, know, guess he's going to sponsor our lunch today. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. I'm glad you're doing good things, man. That's awesome. Thank you, you know, sir. Keeping up with the MMA game and what's going on in New Mexico is a, a big task. You know? Now, you've got a fight coming up in September, and you're on the card with a couple of other Jackson's fighters. Why don't you talk to me about this fight coming up in September? Mm, I got Charlie Valencia. He's a tough cat. I met the guy in town whenever he was here for the Santa Ana card. He was here fighting uh, Yoshiro Maeda, and I fought Dale Hawkins. And, He's a great, great guy. I love him as a person. He's humble. I'm humble. But, you know, come September 2nd, we're going to, you know, we're going to try to tear each other's heads off for 15 minutes. But other than that, you know, it's going to be a good show. Me, Dimashio, Cowboy are going to be on that card. And I'm just going to go out there and represent New Mexico. And I'm going to go out there and just swing these things and get paid. Have you been doing anything extra or have you picked up any new training techniques that you want to discuss? Uh, I've been doing a lot of stuff with the uh, Chris Latrell's TRX program in the morning. It starts, uh, you know, I've been getting up at 6 in the morning. Anybody knew me personally, I'm not a morning person. I don't even get up at 6 in the morning and take my morning leak. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty, you know, it's hard for me to get up. But anyhow, I've been getting up at 6 in the morning, coming and training at 7 in the morning from 7 to 8.30. And then I'll run my three miles right after and then get back to training from 10.30 to noon. But other than that, you know, I've been getting my training out of the way early so I have the rest of the day to kind of go about what I need to do. Other than that, you know, there's, you know, just a lot of, a lot of, a lot of training partners, a lot of big names here and, you know, I enjoy rolling with a lot of these guys and they, you know, add a lot to my arsenal. So do you expect us to see a new and different, improved Ox Wheeler next time around or is it going to be just more of the same? And now you're going to see, you're going to see a different Ox, you know, it's one of those things, you know, I have a, you have a lot of things pushing me mentally and physically and you know I just kind of you know I have to get there emotionally too but you know I have a lot of stuff I have to put a couple flames under my butt that make me really want to train really hard and you're going to see a new improved ox you know it's I've been my cardio is through the roof and you know I've been hitting at least 9 to 12 miles a week and, I mean before it was just you know 4 to 6 but yeah you know I'm, I'm there's there's a statement to be made, and I really, really want to make it. Now, when I first met you, what, that was back in March, one of the things that really rang true when you were one of the first fighters that said it to me, you just had this desire to fight the best in the world. And I wanted to ask you, you know, you, you did the, the One King Rage show, now you're going back to WEC. What, is that still your goal, you know, just to fight the best fighters in the world? Are you looking to get that WEC belt? You know, I, honestly, I, you know, this is like my 24th amateur and pro fight, and you know it's gonna go on my 25th. I'm 22 and two. I'm going on my 25th fight, and I'm just gonna flap my wings until you know, I can't flap them no more. And you know, honestly, you know, I'm just trying to make my mark in this fight game, and you know, and I've done a lot of great things, and you know, it's like one of those things that I came so far. Yet yeah, I still got so far to go, but. With the WEC, I'm going to still try to make my mark there, you know, if I don't become a champion. Well, my whole goal is to become a champion, you know, that's my whole thing, you know. And uh, I really, really wanted to shoot for the King of the Cage belt, but that didn't work out, you know. Abel's still doing his thing with King of the Cage, and, you know, honestly, you know, best of luck to all the guys over there. You get a few emails, and I got chastised last time I interviewed you for not asking you about the flying arm bar. So now I really have to ask you, you, you know you know the flying armbar I'm talking about. Yeah, Tell me about it. Tell me, you know, was that just something you saw it and you wanted to try it? You know, how did that happen that you pulled that off? Man, I actually I learned it just watching a lot of YouTube and Daily Motion and I kinda like just repetition just watching and watching it and I kinda you know, it was like going through stages. I hurt myself a lot just trying to perfect it. Well, you know, I finally, finally did pull it off. My very first flying arm bar I pulled off was in Ring of Fire up in Vail. I think it was uh, called, uh, I can't remember what number card it was, but it was on the Ring of Fire Bell card. I pulled my first flying arm bar. My second flying arm bar was in Fight World. And then my 
third flying arm bar was in the WC against Del Hawk. So I have three of them. And, you know, and they're not my, last, not my first or my last, but, um, you know, it's just one of those things yeah. that I enjoy doing. And, you know, it's yeah. just one of those, those things. you got to be confident. you got to be willing to take that gamble. you got to be willing to counterfeit it. If you miss that flying arm bar, you got the knee bar, you got that leg sweep. Well, other than that, you know, I've been working a lot on it. There's like flying triangles, seated triangles, leg locks, a lot of stuff in my arsenal that I have not really put out there yet. So, you know, stay tuned. So you just look at for the right opportunity to drop some of these new these new weapons you've got. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, you know, it's like one of those things, like the way you train is the way you're going to perform. So a lot of stuff I do here while I'm practicing, I'm going out there messing around. I do a lot of stuff just kind of mess with people mentally. But, you know, whenever I do stuff from here is how I'm going to fight out there in the big stage. But, yeah, it's one of those things that if you're, like, whenever I was, when I did the flying arm bar, like, it's like one of those arms that they tied up on my neck. It's like I've been here, I've been here before, and that's when I just, like, boom, I took it. Right. And it's like muscle you know, memory, like muscle memory. And confidence, too, yeah. to, to recognize that you could do it. And then how long would you say, you said you trained for quite a while trying it. How long would you say it took you to perfect that? Uh, it took me probably like about a good two years. Wow. I hurt myself, I popped my shoulder out, saw I could do it up and over flying triangles and uh, you know I, I hurt myself a lot you know I almost knocked myself out jumping up and spiking my head straight down instead of you know whenever you guys jump and go for the flying over make sure that you're looking down so you hit your shoulders but if you look straight up you're just going to spike your head so I learned the hard way that's a little tip from Ox Wheeler. <laughs> Ox man I gotta say thank you very much bottom of my heart I appreciate it hey. every time we talk it's a good time yeah man. thanks guys